Right. Hola amigos, and welcome back. Do you fancy checking out another Pueblo Magico? I know I do. Let's get going. Hola amigos, and welcome back to Mexico. During this year's Mexico series, I've at times found it difficult to rediscover the magic of Mexico, for obvious reasons. We've visited some brand new locations such as Tula, Iztapalapa, and Nezahualcoyotl. After eating enough to feed the 5,000 in Toluca, I decided to visit one of Mexico's many Pueblo Magicos. Beautiful, authentic, and colorful small towns such as Atlixco, Riel de Catorce, and Bernal are full of Mexican pride and hospitality. So, before heading back to San Luis Potosí in the next video, it's time to jump on the local bus and head to a place with connections to Genesis and the story of creation, and even the Beatles. Welcome to Metapec. Right before we start exploring, just a little technological note. You may have noticed at the end of the last video, there's like a light distortion over there. That's because I smashed my front camera on my phone. I will endeavor to get it fixed as soon as possible. I kind of have to angle it so the light doesn't show, if you know what I mean, so it's a bit difficult. But you know what? I'm taking that as a positive because this might surprise you. I don't watch travel YouTubers and the main reason for that is it's always about them. They never show the destination. It's always just them walking along, talking to the camera. And I used to do that very much. But you know what? I would rather see a beautiful destination like this rather than some egotistical millennial. Let me know what you think in the comments. Dear Di Muertos is coming, amigos. So if you haven't been to a Pueblo Magica or a magic town before, I strongly recommend that you do. This is the first one I've been to in quite a while, I think. Uh, Rio del Monte, Atlixco, Tequisquiapan, places like that I've been to before and they're just absolutely spectacular. The colors are insane. And Pueblo Magico's magic towns are basically like an initiative by the Mexican government to preserve sort of authenticity, if you know what I mean, in terms of small towns. And it just really provides this absolutely awesome experience coming to a place like this. It is just stunning. Now this is October 2020, so as you would expect, there's uh, Precaución and Prohibido El Paso tape everywhere. You can't get into the central square. Shops, etc., have signs saying the use of um, face mask is obligatory and you have to use antibacterial gel. Metepec is to the southeast of Toluca, kind of on the way back to Mexico City. And as you can see in front of me there, I can't show it from the other side, obviously, because I can't get in there. There's a mythical mermaid and it's kind of I guess a pottery tacotta, terracotta style, you know, because Metepec is very famous for its pottery. Okay, to get to the next bit, I have to climb under this rather large foliage and show you this. If you've been following this series, you'll know that it's all about new places, new food, learning new things. This is one of them. It's a very important one. It's called the Tree of Life, and just like with the mermaid, it's that terracotta pottery style. And these are littered all around Metepec. It's basically meant to represent creation, Genesis, the first book, book of the Bible. Is it the Old Testament or the New Testament? I can't remember. Um, and it was basically used, well, these Tree of Life, Life were basically used to teach natives about creation, the creation story. And it kind of looks like, have you seen Poltergeist 2, the ending with the beast, when he takes Carol Ann and it's all these people all sort of meshed together. The thing I wanted to say about Pueblo Manjico is they're always very peaceful and also colorful. Just look at the colors, yellows, blues, orangey, peachy colors with the lovely blue sky, clear blue sky and terracotta. If you're doing a drinking game, take a shot every time I say terracotta in this video. That might be a good little game to play. <laughs> Okay, I'm on the hunt for a certain dish. Viva Mexico, Carbones. But as you can see, there are so many options in Metepec. Hamburguesas, pollo, pastor, cecina. I had cecina last in Hilitla. It's like a thin piece of meat, beef steak. Absolutely beautiful. Camarón, shrimp, beautiful. Alambre, I need to have that soon in a video. Rico pozole, enchiladas. Okay, it's taken a bit longer than expected, but I found what I'm looking for. Pambazos. 
And I just realised I'm going to have to show my face for this bit. Okay, I am beyond excited to eat this. Thank you again to Monica, she recommended Pambazos to have it when I'm in Toluca or Metepec. It's very hot, as you can see. Look at it. Red. I'm gonna say terracotta again. Let's put some salsa on it first. I think I will have salsa verde because I'm really getting into that lately. Oh, it's very thick. Oh, look at that green. Amazing. Look at that. And let's have a little bit of onion, I think. Only a little bit, not too much. That'll do. And then we have limon, of course. Oh, it always goes everywhere and the seeds fly all over the place. Right, the lighting in here is terrible and there is copyrighted music in the background. So let's hope that YouTube doesn't demonetize this. Anyway, onto the food. So you might be thinking these look a bit like tortas and you would be correct because they are like a bread sandwich kind of thing but they're very different so they're coated in like a chili sauce and then fried as you can see now in a big vat of bubbling hot oil and it gives it a very crispy feel and in terms of the filling um, I did read that you could have potato with uh, chorizo verde but they haven't got that here so I've got papa's potato with um, what have I got I think it's some kind of chorizo or meat in it but we'll see and um, Obviously, we've got salsa and onion and like limon on the top. Let's tuck in. And I've got to mention that as an additional extra, I did add quesillo, as you can see. Cheese, stringy cheese. Mmm. OMG. Beautiful. It's very weird to have potatoes on things. I don't have potatoes much in Mexico. But it's crispy. The bottom is nice and crispy. It's very hot. And all the toppings just add a bit of extra kick to it. Mm. Mm. That is meat of some kind. I think it's pork on it. So yeah, pork and potato. Stunning. I only just realised I'm here during Chimera 2020 Festival of Art and Culture. 30 years of culture in Metepec. 10th to the 30th of October. Right, we're going to go up to the Templo de San Juan Bautista or the Iglesia de la Virgen de las de los, de los Dolores. <sighs> Jesus, it's up that way. Right, well, let's check out the Iglesia de San Juan Bautista first. This is helpful. Good old Pueblo Magicos. It's in English. I can read it in Spanish pretty much, but you know what? I'm being lazy. It's um, oh, 1959, a small church was built dedicated to St. John the Baptist. And there's lots of history there. It's a magically admirable place. Let's go and see if that's true. As always, really impressive and grand churches in Mexico. The yellow reminds me of the church in Cholula. And you've got that stained glass in the middle up there. Very intricately designed facade. Let's see if it's open. Let's follow these ladies with the baby. Niños. Oh. It says not open on Wednesday, but today is Thursday, so let's see if we can go in here without being told off. There's a big crucifix there. Okay, there's nothing around here. What's nice brick walls, not brick, stone even. Oh, and it's a dead end. Okay, as you can see, this doesn't look promising. Precaución! Welcome to 2020 in Mexico. There are a lot of antojitos mexicanos in Metepec. Mexican snacks. Lots of places down there you can eat. So clearly, es cerrado. It's closed. But that's okay because we can get some good views. Let's try and make the best of a bad situation as always. That's becoming the catchphrase of 2020 videos. Well, I don't know what's up here, but apparently that um, what's it called? Iglesia Church San Juan Bautista has got a 200 meter long tree of life, which I really wanted to see. And interestingly, tree of life was included on the Beatles 
Sergeant Pepper's Lonely Hearts Band, whatever it's called, album, many, many years ago. Wow, look at the view. Look at that building in the distance there. It's kind of out of place. It looks like something from Belarus when I was there or something like that. Look at the mountains in the distance. Let's do a slow pan so you can appreciate the view of Metepec. There's daily rooftop Mexico life down there. There's a senorita hanging up her washing. I wonder if she's got a washing machine. I might have to bring my stuff. Oh, yeah, some kind of theatre. Or oh, big auditorium. Something's being rehearsed down there. This is odd. Some kind of ginormous cat. Chimera. That is um, the name of this festival. Right, can I get out of here? Brilliant. Okay, you know what I said about pottery earlier and terracotta? Yep, it's time for another shot, people. Casa Ortega, yeah. A lot of the buildings and the restaurants and shops have these like suns and these clay, um, I guess, design decoration on the front of the buildings. Um, and also there are some buildings that have like Adam and Eve at the top, like I said earlier about the creation story Genesis. So that is very much something that is prevalent here, the whole religious aspect. Look, I found a pottery shop, terracotta. <laughs> um, yeah, these sort of clay pots, they very much remind me of, I know it's not about Mexico, but when I was in the Balkans, a lot of food is served in clay pots like this, like earthenware pots to keep it warm. And I imagine, yeah, I, actually, I'm sure I've seen in Mexico the same thing being done. But as you can see, you know, as well as the actual pottery aspect of it, you know, the, the artwork on it. it must take a long time to do all these little dots and, you know, quite intricate design. I'm not sure if these are like sort of mass produced or are they more sort of artisan style. I, I do like that artisan aspect of Mexican life. Uh, you know, there's a lot of artisan markets everywhere, especially in magic towns. So, you know, they're not just like a touristy thing, but, you know, they are something that represent local culture. So they're important to, um, to go to. And wow, look at this place next door, these big pots. And then inside you've got so many, even like little flower pots. I'm ending this video with a lolly. If you're American, what do you call these? I can't remember. Oh bloody hell, it's windy. Lollipop, no lollipop is the small ones for me in the UK, but this is a lolly, because it's on a stick. And this is tamarindo. Apologies on being thick, in English that's tamarind, right? Right, this is 2020, when you can only find somewhere to sit down with tape behind your head. Anyway, I've already bitten into it, because I had bad lighting a minute ago, but anyway. Let's pretend. Mmm! Beautiful. Never had this before. What does it taste of? I guess it tastes of tamarind, but I don't really know what that tastes like. Obviously well, it's a bit different from like, you know, a strawberry lolly or something, but it's all good, very refreshing. I think you have, uh, isn't tamarind it's like a drink as well, like horchata? I might be mistaken, I've completely forgotten. But it's nice. So it's almost time for me to go back to Mexico City, that will be the next video. But I wanted to say about Pueblo Magicos, Mexicans take a lot of pride in them, I feel like, you know. And I have felt quite distanced from anyone since I've been back in Mexico because of Corona. Not only physically, but mentally distanced. And that goes away when you come somewhere like this because everyone is so hospitable and welcoming and polite. And always say hello to random women on the street, abuelitas, they'll say hello back. You may not get that in your own country, so it's really refreshing. And the thing I will say as well is because of all that politeness and hospitality, all this crap that you hear about is Mexico safe, all the rubbish that you hear on YouTube, which by the way, in case you hadn't realized, it's just done for views, it's not genuine. Um, all of that goes away, you know, and I feel like I've come here today to a Pueblo Magico and I've got my Mexico back, if you know what I mean. So, awesome. I'll see you next time in Mexico City. Thanks for watching, I hope you've enjoyed Metapec. I'll see you next time. Catch you later. Wind.